Hello and welcome to a new video. Today I'll be talking about Unreal 5.7.0 which was launched as a preview yesterday and I will be going over the AI assistant using it to help me make something and I will be comparing it to DeepSeek and I'll also be going over this level intro template which is due to make an appearance. Now I had to get this off the GitHub branch within the templates and you will have to target the dev 5.7 and you can follow my previous tutorial on how to build this and the reason I decided to go over this is it's fantastic for beginners and shows you how to get set up with the engine it's kind of like a, a cut down version of the content examples that you can get on fab and really is simplified to allow beginners to, to find their way around on real it takes you into gameplay mode and into the editor and introduces you to many of the features step by step at the moment it's probably incomplete but I imagine they're going to develop this and I would keep my eyes on this if you want to start using Unreal. Right off the bat it shows you how to use WASD and move around then it shows you how to move, rotate and scale objects and it constantly warns you that whenever you press escape you get back into the editor with these quirky little instructional guides which have a little bit of text here and they can be modified and are reused across the level to guide you as you go along. Next, it introduces you to the content drawer, and you can go in here and add some meshes to assist you in being able to progress up this next stage of the map. The featured character hasn't got a gun in this, and instead has some hands in front of them. Here, it introduces you to collisions, and you can go to the static mesh and add a collision to assist you in going over it. The next stage features a blocking volume that I've already moved out of the way and shows you how to keep your user confined to spaces within the map. Next we have a decal and some materials and it shows you how the material editor uses parameters for things like metallic and roughness and colour. A Niagara particle effect is next and here we can go in and tweak this very very easily and start to see what some of these parameters do. There is a physics section here, which consists of several objects with physics settings applied. Simulate physics here, and a blueprint that has a bunch of physics, physical, physics constraints here that can also be tweaked with things like the linear and angular limits. In this section we have a meta sound and the first time I've actually seen a meta sound in a template and we were going to have a look at this later with our AI assistant to show you to see if we can do some coding based on this section. Here we can go into this room and press L and the mouse button to add light. And in the next section we have an animation that mimics your movements. Next, we have a sequencer that plays whenever you walk into it. And a blueprint that uses an event dispatcher to open a door. In the next section, it introduces us to the templates and samples that are available and shows us things like the stacker bot and the crop out sample and Lyra for building different games of your own choice. Now back to the meta sounds and into the good stuff. So I'm just going to go into plugins here and I'm going to search for AI. Mine's on but if yours is off by default just click that and you'll restart your engine. And I'm going to see if the AI assistant can help me build something here to this meta sound to alter the sound. If we look at the blueprint here, what we have is a meta sound audio component here. The meta sounds in here, an event tick, which basically means every frame. We have a random seed as an integer parameter inside our meta sound. So if we just double click on meta sound, have a look and see what's going on here. We have a BPM of 200 driving everything. That random seed is driving a number between 30 and 55 here and 50 and 70 here, which is changing our MIDI note quantizer and MIDI to frequency. And that's changing the frequency of a saw and a saw and sine wave combined via some mixers and an output. Without getting too much into the sound design specifics, I want to see if we can do something like alter the speed when we get closer. So let's see.
So I want to change that value as we get closer. And let's bring up our AI assistant. And we can do this by going into Window AI Assistant or Alt and F1 apparently. And I am going to go into my MetaSound Blueprint, which I've docked up here. And I'm going to dock the AI assistant here next to Details. I type like somebody who has arthritis. I have a blueprint with a collision spear and I would like a BPM driven meta sound to adjust its BPM to get faster as my first person character gets closer to the center of the collision sphere. Let's try this. And the first thing it returns whilst it's searching for my answer is links to the documentation. Now I don't really actually need this collision sphere. I could I initially put this in here so I could activate and deactivate the sound whenever I overlapped it rather than auto activate. I could actually use the scene root here and get the location of that instead. However, I have found that if I engineer this prompt slightly, it starts to elaborate and it gives me things like booleans to check if my first person character is in there. And in fact, I could use this to further see if any other characters are in this collision as well to alter the sound depending on their behavior. So let's start here instead of starting with the meta sound. And I'm going to assume that I know a little bit about Unreal here. So for the beginner, maybe in the future, we could have something which will show them the UI and potentially generate some of these objects for them to make it a little easier to get started. But for me, I'm gonna to go to the root of the meta sound here and I'm going to add a collision sphere, or a sphere collision, sorry. So in event graph, on event tick or timer with a reasonable interval. I'm gonna go with timer with a reasonable interval. Get, get the player's location. Get actor location. It's asking me to do that directly. And I'm gonna set up a timer here. And I'm gonna do timer by event, even though it doesn't specifically say that. I'm going to set this to 0 0.1, I'm going to set this to looping, and I'm going to set this to a custom event. Now, as a beginner, I may not know how to trigger this. I'm going to do an event begin play. And I'm just going to do a print string at this time, just to see if I can get the player location. Okay, good stuff. It is asking me to get the word location of the sphere component. So I'm going to grab that. And there is the get word location. And it's asking me to use vector length. Player location minus sphere location. Let's get vector length here. Let's remove these first. And let's print string that as well. Now again, blueprints are a strange language. So again, if this could generate blueprint nodes, I'm sure this would make it a much easier for beginners. But so far, I am impressed. Let's try this and see what this says. At this point, I'm not even certain if I need the collision sphere. I initially assumed I would need a collision sphere, but I probably could just use the location of this cube instead. Just me entering that, there's not a need for a collision with this, what I'm trying to do. So perhaps I confused it, but the AI hasn't implicated that I need to do anything with the collision sphere if I need an overlap or anything like that. Let's normalize this distance to BPM range. So saying I can use the map range clamped. I'm gonna pull that from here. And I think my nearest distance was about 107. And the furthest was about 1300. I'll go to 1400. And I'll clamp these BPMs to about 600 and about 200 there. And just double check that that's okay. And also now I am going to set the BPM parameter on the meta sound. So it's telling me here to use the set float parameter and the parameter name is BPM. There is two set float parameters here. One is an audio parameter controller interface and the other one is an audio component. 
Let's try this one first. Now this attenuation is making the sound fade out as I get further away, so let's ask the AI about this as well. Sound attenuation settings. So if I go in here and go to attenuation settings, this is what we have. And I'm going to double click that. And it's telling me I can play around with the min radius and the max radius. Or I can completely disable by unchecking override attenuation or setting override attenuation, disabling attenuation properties. So I'm going to override and removing the enable volume attenuation as well. So I'm pretty impressed. I've managed to get that up and running pretty quickly. Now, let's really test this AI. So it's telling me that the information provided is based on the official Unreal Engine 5 documentation and it's from the latest stable release, which is June 2024. Okay, I tried to call it Norbert, and it's telling me I am Epic Developer Assistant. It's obviously not taking any of my crap. I had a little flash of OpenAI there, and then it said, sorry, I can't assist with that issue as it violates Epic's terms of use. Do you use any other data sources like Reddit or Stack Overflow for training? Let's leave it at that. Just for the sake of some friendly competition, let's ask DeepSeek the same information. Now DeepSeek is giving me a far more detailed answer do I need the far more detailed answer? The Epic Assistant didn't tell me to set up any variables. And it's elaborating a little bit more on what I actually need to do with the MetaSound, a trigger on change node. Interestingly, it's adding an enhanced version with smoothing for interpolation. And it's giving me a reference to my MetaSound, which was already a component of my blueprint and an option for debug visualization. But Unreal's assistant is giving me some tips and best practice and is suggesting to use a timer and debug using a print string. And it's specifically mentioning Unreal 5.6 in its tips and best practice. And again, DeepSeek is showing me to check the attenuation settings, disable attenuation, modify. Now, interestingly, DeepSeek is telling me that the cutoff date is early 2023. And it's telling me that it is using community resources like UE5 YouTube tutorials, the official documentation, and whilst Epic Developer Assistant was quite firm that it wanted to be called Epic Developer Assistant, let's see what happens if I call DeepSeek Norbert. So, DeepSeek likes to be called Norbert. Norbert, at your service. And now DeepSeek is telling me that it does use forum discussions and Stack Overflow, GitHub, and technical blogs and tutorials, etc., for its training. So 
So it's specifically telling me that it's cut off knowledge doesn't support Unreal 5.7. Whereas the Unreal AI Assistant doesn't have any qualms about guiding me to using a feature that is apparently relatively new to 5.7. Now even though DeepSeek doesn't know, it's asking me to check in the project settings for Nanite Foliage. And Unreal's assistant is telling me there is no global project setting to activate Nanite for all assets. Meanwhile, I'll go into project settings and check, just to make sure I'm not going mad, that there is a Nanite Foliage button. No, there is no distinct project level setting for enabling Nanite on Foliage. I guess where the AI assistant could have the edge going forwards is in new features in Unreal. And if they implement these correctly within the documentation and make it exclusive for use of just the AI assistant, it could be onto something. Once we see procedurally generated blueprints or intelligently generated blueprints, this could start to become a really useful tool for prototyping for beginners and intermediate developers alike. For now, I'm quite happy that it's helped me find some nodes that I needed, and I like its blunt sense of humour and the fact that it wants to get the job done. Thank you for watching, and do check out my Patreon, where I will give you this project if you need it, or show you how to build from source if you need to. Thank you, subscribe, and good night.